Hello and welcome to a very special edition of Rise High Facebook Live, where this month we are talking about one of my favorite topics, uh, which is how to teach kids about money. And to help me with this topic, I have the very wonderful Richard O'Grady, who has done countless presentations and workshops yep. Uh, through our Rise High Rookies program in schools with primary school and high school students, teaching them about money and entrepreneurship. So really excited to have Richard join me for this uh, special segment. And it's also pretty exciting because Richard's recently become a dad. So uh, that makes it extra special because obviously um, as parents, you know, we um, definitely want to give our kids the best head start we can in life and financial literacy is definitely a skill that every Australian child needs to learn and it is a skill that can help them later in life in a huge way. So today we're going to be delving deep into some of the topics that we discuss and we cover in the Rise High Rookies workshops that we run yep. in schools so that hopefully um, at home with your own children or with the young people in your life, you're able to help guide them through some of these principles and some of these learnings that we discussed tonight. Uh, we're definitely loving um, any comments or questions that come through, so please feel free to write a comment below, um, or if you have a question, jot that down. If you want it to, um, if you if you don't want to do it on Facebook, you can send an email to Amanda at risehigh.com.au. We love to hear from you, and we love to make it an interactive session. That's why you're on these lives. So please feel free to send your comments and questions through. Um, just before we get started on this great topic, just a few updates. Uh, firstly, we do have our first home buyer seminar coming up on the 2nd of April, which is really exciting. We're holding those in our offices in Prospect, where we've got a special uh, purpose-built uh, workshop space, which is really great. And we've already uh, got quite a, quite a great interest in that seminar and tickets are running out quickly. It is free to attend, but you do need to register. So get online on our website, risehigh.com.au and register your interest for that seminar because it will be a really good one. For anyone that you know that is wanting to buy their first house or their first investment property, definitely one not to miss. Following that in um, May, I believe we've got our seminar for property investment, um, beginner's guide to getting started in property investment. That is also a must attend for anyone that is wanting to get ahead financially. So check out our, web, our seminars on the website, risehigh.com.au. So let's it. kick it off. Yep. Um, let's start with uh, just a general explanation Absolutely. of what the Rise High Rookies program is because we've been running it for a few years now yep. um, and you know let's just tell everyone what the Rise High Rookies program is and what we actually do. Yeah, absolutely so the Rise High Rookie program um, is where we go into schools and teach I suppose the next generation about financial literacy and that starts from the uh, I suppose the earlier grades or the primary grades and we do that all the way through to I suppose your year 12s who are about to enter you know I suppose either uni or into the workforce so um, that program is tailored to you know quite a quite a few age groups and, and, and it's been bought out of um, I suppose the the global money week um, incentive that happens within our industry and, and we've grown that um, yeah we've grown that to quite a big thing now every yeah. year we've got a full week um, during the global money week and then throughout the year we're doing another um, huge bunch of schools that we're running the program through. Which Absolutely. Is so I guess uh, one thing there is that it is a free program that we offer on a volunteer basis. Yep. So it is available for any um, any schools or any community groups or youth groups that want to book us in for a uh, for a visit. We can actually do. Um, you know, we can you can actually book that through our website. We do have a Rise High Rookies page on our website. So. Yep. If you are interested in getting a free financial literacy session for some young Australians, we would love to help out. So please feel free to register your interest in the program. And the sessions can be tailored to run from 45 minutes to an hour and a half. And we can tailor them for the age group that we are talking to. So it Definitely. is a great program. We love it. It is. It's, it's awesome. a it's lot of fun. fun. And the kids love it and they get a lot out of it. So yeah. it's um, it's a win-win all round. So. Right, well, let's start discussing some of the topics okay. that we go through in the session. 
just to also give some hints to parents as to what they can start talking to their kids about. Um, I think, you know, one of the first main basic topics that we discuss is, you know, savings versus spending yep. and specifically needs versus wants. Yep. So let's just go into that into a bit more detail and, yep. you know, what do we really drill into into those topics? Yeah, I think with the, the saving versus spending, it's about, um, you know, setting a goal with the kids. So understanding that if you want to achieve something um, quite large as a purchase or something like that within their life that they have to to save for that. And that flows into the needs versus wants where um, there are many things that we want to have, like maybe when we're talking to the kids, a lot of them want the, a new iPhone or an iPad or even an iPod, um, which you know I suppose um, is nice to have, but they don't necessarily need it. Yeah. Um, whereas... Um, some of those needs might be um, uh, a new pair of shoes or clothes that they that they have to have to you know either go to school or perform maybe sports on the weekend or something like that. So, um, one of the things that I love to see during the presentations is uh, we have an exercise where the children actually sit down and plan out their savings goal, yes. and um, you know they'll actually think hard, long and hard about what they're wanting to save for and then they actually have to create a plan yep. you know how much money do they have to save every week to enable them to get what they want yep. in the time frame that they want to get it and it yep. really um it helps to it helps them with goal setting yeah and it helps them to understand the benefit of delayed gratification absolutely you know yeah it does and, and, and i also think that it gives some value to money and mm. that mum and dad aren't walking uh, ATMs mm. and uh, by going through the process that we do or the, the education that we do um, it's actually more empowering watching the children set the goal and then work out a plan on how they're going to achieve that um, and they realize pretty quickly that I, within a few months I could actually achieve it by mm. doing my chores or um, you know saving my pocket money that I get so and it's not only about setting the goal and making making it achievable yep. for them in their own mind, but it's also about them understanding how getting distracted along their journey yep. will impact their ability to get that goal. Absolutely. So, you know, I mean, having young kids myself, they're very easily distracted by shiny new objects yep. every time we go to the shops. Yep. Um, and that can easily distract them from their larger savings goal. But being able to sort of bring their thought process back to, okay, well, you could use your savings yep. or your money to buy this but what will that mean for the big goal that you have Absolutely. you know when you want to if you want to buy your ipad how much longer will you need to save for to get yep. your ipad if you let this you know let this ha let this little purchase get in the way of, of that's that right goal. that's yeah. right so it's really um it's really good you know and and we we generally find that the kids are really quite good at understanding the difference between needs and wants yep. once you actually get them into a conversation about it. Yeah, definitely. They do. They um, they can pick up pretty quickly that um, there are there are certain things that make their world go round mm. that they can quickly see that, you know, we need fuel in the car, we need uh, maintenance on the car, we need electricity and all those things. So they can, they can see very quickly once we start to discuss and... Um, I suppose that's a really key point because um, kids, we probably don't give them as much, um, mm. uh, I suppose, um, I don't know what the right word is. We don't give them enough credit. We, that, I mean, yeah. we don't really think that they're going to understand these concepts, but they do understand exactly. them from a really young age. Absolutely. And I think by teaching or getting into the schools early and teaching them about mm. finance gives them an opportunity to you know, potentially be ahead of the curve in that space where, um, you know, when they do get into their working years, they've already established some really good habits about how to save for their goals and, and how to achieve um, how to achieve them, but also knowing that, you know, when they get out of home that they need to pay their rent and Absolutely. their electricity, et cetera. And so. research has shown that um, most kids have developed their money management habits by the age of eight. Yeah. which is really young and you know and I was quite surprised to get that to get that stat but when I look at my own children yeah. my oldest is eight I sort of can see how that happens yeah. because they've already you know they've already been watching what their parents have been doing yeah. they've already developed their own opinion about money and how it should be spent and how it shouldn't be spent yeah. 
Um, and I think the conversation about needs versus wants is so important to keep drilling into them because yep. they need to understand and have the, I guess, the self-discipline to stop themselves from actually um, the impulse buying that Definitely. kids, you know, kids can sometimes be tempted to do. So I know with my children, yep. you know, we sort of separate it and say, well, mummy and daddy will buy everything that the family needs. Yep. But if it's something that you want, that's something that you need to spend with your savings. Yep. And that helps them to identify the difference between, you know, what's mummy gonna pay for and what's I, what am I gonna pay for with my savings? And then they also have to think, well, is this a need or is this a want and yep. where's the money gonna come from? Absolutely. Um, and I often find that, you know, when we look at something that they wanna buy, um, I say, well, is it something that you need or is it something that you want? And then they work out, well, it's just something that they want and they work out the money's gonna have to come from their jar rather than mine. They will think twice about whether they need it or not. And it's a good, it's a, um, a good way for them to enhance their decision making too because absolutely um, you know with what you've just explained um, it does give you know your your young children a chance that to make a final decision which is also can be pretty tricky too so absolutely that empowers them to make um, oh, more of great. those decisions yeah. moving forward absolutely um, just before we move on to point number two shout out to Joe Rue Richard Shauna and Kelly thanks so much for tuning in guys really appreciate your time and yeah, love to hear your comments and thoughts on what we're discussing tonight. And if you've got any things, tips to share, we would love to hear those too. Yep. Okay, let's move on to the next point. Yep. So um, the next point is that we talk about cost versus value. Absolutely. So obviously this is a big one, you know, because it's easy for children to look at a price tag and see how much something costs. Yep. But how do we use um, the workshop to explain value as opposed to cost? Yeah, absolutely. So in a workshop, we use, um, I suppose, uh, a milk example, where if you go to the supermarket, you've got multiple varieties of milk and, and some are, you know, uh, and also in this example, there is, you know, your litre carton and your three litre carton and, um, and a value, you know, a value pack and also a premium product. So I suppose, um, what we're trying to educate the, the children in when we, we show this example is with the mathematical equation, if um, you know, one's worth a dollar and one's worth six and you're getting different amounts in both, what's the best value for money? Um, they can quite easily work that out. When we talk about what's, um, what's the, um, the best product, I suppose, or the, the, the better um, produced product, um, they sometimes get a little bit confused. So we then look at things like, you know, is it locally owned? Is it, um, is it a company that's got stronger ethics? Um, and then once we've had that discussion, they can soon realize that, oh, there are brands out there that stand for more, which is why they might be a little bit more expensive. Yeah, but it's, about, it's really about them being able to make an informed decision yep. and getting value for money based on what they're concept of value is absolutely rather than just buying something that has yeah. a price tag on it a good example of that is there there are some children that we talk to have got five siblings and the household is unable to afford that premium product because they've got five mouths to feed um, whereas uh, in, and in that case if the the single child or the only child was to buy that much milk they'd have half of it go off in the fridge so That's right. the kids so also identify the value of what the family needs. Do we throw away two liters every week, or do we buy what we need to mm -hmm. um, to get by as well? So yeah, and I also love um, how this discussion also gets kids thinking about not necessarily jumping into purchasing things that they want or they need to buy uh, when they're full price. Yep but waiting for them to come on sale and understanding how much discount that they can get. Absolutely. And looking for bargains, I guess. Yep. You know, it's really about getting value for money. Definitely. And really, you know, thinking about, well, there might be something that they want to buy, um, but instead of rushing in to buy it when it's full price, they might sort of wait until it goes on sale. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, so it's a really fun, it's a really fun discussion to have Absolutely. with children. And many, and I think, like, like we said before, you know, we underestimate, their understanding yeah, definitely. and they are seeing what we're doing you know we really need to give them more credit and yep. involve them in those decisions in the supermarket yep. you know when we're out at the supermarket doing our grocery shopping um, all of those things 
Yeah, absolutely. Shout out to Adelaide Budgeting, who's just tuned in. Thanks for joining us, guys. Um, keep up the great work helping Australians with their budgeting. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll move on to the next one yep. now because one of my favourite parts yep. of the uh, content is entrepreneurship. Yeah, absolutely. And we, you know, we look at, we explore ways of making money. Yep. So um, there's so many different ways that children receive money. Uh, what are some of the things that we discuss in the making money and the entrepreneurship components of our workshops? Yeah, I think first of all, um, it, it, this is very much one of the most exciting parts of the program because there are quite um, there are quite a few children who show um, an instant um, you know I suppose um, taking to knowing how to make money or knowing what they need to do to to make money in that entrepreneur space and some of them are already doing the household chores mm. um, some of them are forced to be doing the household chores um, but a lot of the children um, that we talked to um, had a lot of things close to their heart that they were striving and working for that they wanted to either start a business in mm. or end up becoming a, um, you know, in, in one case I can think of uh, becoming a, a doctor to cure certain things that had impacted her, her family directly. And um, it's, it's, it gives them an opportunity that they can then empower themselves to go and make the money that they need to to achieve their their saving goals as well yeah. so and i just love the entrepreneurial ideas that come out of them yeah, you know absolutely. they actually are so creative and innovative with you know what they want to do and how they're going to make money whether it's a sushi bar outside yeah. their house or making fresh lemonade yeah. or you know i just love the creativity that they have and just at that age you know, even from primary school age, you know, anything is possible for them, yep. you know, in their mind. And that's something that should just, should just be embraced and encouraged. It definitely should. And yeah. um, it gives us a lot of energy uh, ourselves to keep doing what we do in, in those communities um, or in the schooling communities as well. Um, but it, I suppose in a lot of households, if we're going to talk to, you know, I suppose most people, it's helping around the home. Mm. A lot of a lot of parents are yeah, in a washing position, the car. So yeah, <laughs> washing the car or, or mowing the lawn. That was yeah. one thing that I, I did as a as a youngster was mow the lawn. I wasn't a fan of doing the dishes, but you know we we got those things done because we wanted the you know fifty cents or a dollar or whatever yeah. it might have been back back then when we were a bit younger. But yeah, we have a dollar system at home. Yeah, yeah, and and it soon adds up, and and you know if you're looking to buy something for you know, a hundred dollars, and you've got you're getting two or three dollars, maybe even up to five dollars a week. You know, you can get there pretty quickly. Yeah, so. absolutely. And I think as a um, what I like to do with my children is I like to actually sit down with them. Yep. You know, every six months or say or so, and and actually ask them, well, yep. what do you think you could do yep. to uh, make extra dollars? Yep. We work on a one dollar system, and they actually brainstorm and come up with ideas oh, of what they would need to do to earn a dollar yep. um, and then we sort of discuss them and, and we come up with a bit of a list of, of what sort of things they can do to earn a dollar yep. um, and you know I like to expand it not only to chores but also to um, personality mm -hmm. characteristics that I'm trying to encourage so yep. you know if they've you know if they've done something really brave yep. or, or shown a huge amount of kindness or yep. something just to try and reward certain behaviors yeah, absolutely. that um, you know, and try and encourage them to display those behaviours more frequently as well. Yeah. So there's lots of different ways you can do it. It's really about empowering your children to come up with options of how they can make the money that they need to make to do what they want to do. Definitely, absolutely. We, um, I think I've got a lot of that to, to learn now with a little one coming on board and, and using your knowledge in that space um, I certainly will have to pick your brain a bit. Yeah, but you're just starting I, I, on that I've, journey. I have, and I have started to think about, um, although um, I've only got a newborn, um, what do we do with our money to make sure that um, you know our daughter's future is also secured too? So I've had to reflect back on this even as an adult and say, yeah. well, what am I doing with, with my money? Um, and I'm just grateful that I've had um, you know leaders in my life that have helped educate me through my life with 
how I should manage my money. So it's just even at, at, at our age to pulse check back and say, hey, where is our money going? Um, you know, and how can we be the influence on the next generation? Absolutely. You know, being so close. So, and um, I like the comment that's just come through from Adelaide Budgeting. It's all about the power of knowing your numbers and nurturing young minds. Thanks for the yeah. comment. I definitely Absolutely. agree. Absolutely. Yeah. So the entrepreneurial making money part's always a lot of fun. It is. Kids love sort of brainstorming how they're going to make money, which yep. is great. Um, we then get into the topic of credit. Yes. And I guess. Um, you know, with the younger kids, we sort of just touch on this. Yep. And then with the older kids, we go into more detail because they're obviously at a different stage yeah. of their life and probably closer to getting credit cards and, and yep. phone bills. But let's touch on what we do with the primary school children in terms of credit just to help them gain a basic understanding. Yeah, I, th I think um, with, with the younger children, we just talk about, um, I suppose, when your parents go to the shops and they're tapping away their card that that's um that there's not always um it's not an endless supply yeah it's not an endless bucket of money absolutely so it never runs out we, we quickly explain that um you know either with that credit card that they're using to pay that that needs to be paid back or with the home that they live in there may be a home loan yeah. or something just that they have to pay certain things to maintain the house that they live yeah. in. Yeah, um, and I think on that topic, I really encourage parents to discuss their liabilities with their children. Yeah. You know, and discuss the home loan, discuss your electricity bills, discuss your, you know, your water bills, Absolutely. and just make keep them informed of what, you know, what obligations you do have. And when you are, you know, using your credit card, make sure that they understand that that is money that needs to be paid back by the savings in your bank account. Definitely. Because in today's cashless society, it is really difficult for children to understand and comprehend the value of physical yeah. money because they don't see it and feel it and touch it. Absolutely. Uh, so they can't see it running out as you actually use it. So it's so important to keep helping them to understand that concept. And yeah. I think, you know, when we go through um, what is credit and what isn't credit yeah. in the workshop, you know, most children struggle to differentiate between yeah. what is credit and what isn't credit. And I think that's because we don't give them enough credit and talk to them yeah. that, that we don't, you know, we don't talk to them enough about these yeah. things in our day to day life. So it's really important for them to understand, you know, what credit is and what it means yeah. and that if you do borrow money, you do need to pay it back. Yeah. And you pay it back. Um, at an interest rate, typically that mm. is a little bit more. So whoever you've borrowed the money from, um, in a in a simple credit sense, when we yeah. go to the older older kids, it's um, that person wants to be paid back, whether it's an institution or even if you've borrowed money, um, you know, from your your parents, they might not charge you interest, but mm. you still need to pay that back. So that then becomes something you budget for. Um, Absolutely. Every other week to make sure you you made it, you're meeting your your liabilities. So yeah. Um, yeah, and we do, I suppose, then move that to a greater scale as we move into the to the older, um, the older grades. So the, yeah. the the more high school students, where, you know, as you were saying earlier, they're starting to consider their their life outside of school or their higher education, and then uh, into their professions. And um, that may mean credit cards. That may mean personal loans. And um, you know, understanding that, yeah, you might end up with a flash car, but you still have the liability to pay back. You don't yeah. necessarily own that car immediately. You've got to pay that back. But then on top of that, you've also got to pay the fuel, the registration, insurance. the ongoing maintenance, insurance, yeah. etc. So I suppose the message we're, we're talking about here is that we're trying to educate across everything and give a full picture uh, to the children we're talking to so that they're not walking into um, Absolutely. Things that are going to give them, you know, give them great. This is real life, you know, real life lessons that they need yeah. to learn. And I think it's just so valuable for them to understand what debt is and what it means to have debt. Um, just a sh quick shout out to Twee, Ben, Susan and Sally. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we love um, Adelaide Budgeting's comment to maybe show kids cash over card. And I agree, I think especially for younger kids, seeing you pay with physical cash 
and seeing that cash run out at a certain point is a really valuable uh, thing for children to see because that helps them to understand that it's not an endless supply of money. Um, yeah. That if you are putting you know, making payments with your card yeah. that you do need to eventually pay that back. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, I think it's it's a really valuable tip. Thank yeah. you for that. And as I mean, as technology, um, you know, continues to improve, um, that cash over card situation may not work in every um, instance where I, I believe the Garden of Unearthly Delights was almost cashless. Cashless, yeah. Um, and, you know, that's one it's example. It's actually quite difficult these days. Yeah, to, to actually go down that yeah. traditional or the old school cash. That's um, right. It can but be I challenging. suppose on that, the, the message is the money can run out. So um, I can think of an example I heard recently where um, the Google Home and you can order your groceries and things through the mm. Google Home and, and the, young, uh, the young daughter or, or son of this particular family was making orders because they're just copying what they'd heard mum and dad and do. And didn't realise that those orders were costing Yeah, so and things were money. rocking up on the doorstep <laughs> that um, had been Which ordered by... Which is an by, innocent mistake, yeah. really, but they didn't realise yeah. that that was actually having a detrimental effect. Absolutely. So then, you know, maybe that's a good time to have a quick little uh, education piece I mean, of the child. you can even carry that example into wasting water. Absolutely. Or wasting electricity at home. Yeah. You know, that's one of the topics we also yeah. cover is not only saving physical money yep. but also how can you help your family to save money at home yep. by you know bringing your lunch from home rather than tuck shop orders and yep. you know um, looking Shorter after your belongings and not yep. losing your school jumpers that cost hundreds of dollars to replace yes. and things like that you yep. know all of these things add up so once yeah. again more important discussions it is absolutely yeah we, we, we do you know and I suppose just to round out that quickly we, we talk about you know, riding to bike versus riding your bike to to school instead of mm. um, driving or um, saving you know, petrol, helping the environment. Absolutely. So there are many many things that you know. Again, the children blow us away with their answers on how they can help their, yeah. their family save money. So we did um, get a bit sidetracked, yes. and that was partly my fault. That's I do okay. get a bit excited about That's this fine. topic. Um, let's just go back to the older kids and okay. Greta and debt um, because. You know, with the older kids um, at teenage year yep. level high school, we do also go into more complex topics and explain what happens if they misuse debt. You know, we start to talk about the cost of uh, moving out of home yep. with the older students and um, talking about understanding debt and interest from a borrowing perspective yeah. if they're interested in car loans yep. and, you know, all of those sorts of things. So, um, you know, the other thing that we look at is what... Um, what sort of things they need to have if they want to borrow money. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, I guess just around these topics, you know, what are the sort of things that you think are really important for young adults to mm. to be across? Let Maybe let's start with what happens if you misuse your credit. <laughs> yeah, um, well, this can happen in, I suppose, a couple of ways, and I'll, I'll, explain, I'll explain this. So if you... Uh, a young person or any anyone really who who's taken out credit and you've um, you've started to you, you may have over um, capitalized on what you can afford and you've missed some payments on on repaying your car loan or, or even your credit card that can start to have an impact on your credit file and I suppose your credit file is the one um, binding uh, ingredient I suppose that all of our banks are looking at mm. to see if your conduct um, in repaying your debts is good or is not good yeah and the more you miss these little things even if it's only you know once or twice um, even on a phone bill for example that can have a poor effect on your credit file and your credit rating and the lower the credit rating ends up being for yourself um, yeah. the higher you end up paying for things like like debts in the future. This is a pretty unusual topic for, I mean, many many adults don't really understand yeah. this. So yeah. teaching teenagers about it, it's a pretty um, complex thing for them to learn, but it's so important for them to understand that their actions will impact their future. Absolutely. You know, and that's the main message. You it know, is. the main message is that if you misuse your credit or if you... If you don't, you know, meet your obligations, yeah. then it could have lasting or you know ongoing. Yeah, and impacts. I suppose the the second part to to that is um, a lot of these uh, children we're talking to, or, or you know, young adults, um, 
are currently living off of a budget mum and dad might set for them or a phone that mum and dad might be providing them that's not maybe on a credit system but is maybe um, on a plan with a family plan and their actions even through that can have a detrimental impact maybe on mum and dad oh, if yeah. they're not handling um, or using these tools um, you know I suppose maturely then that could end up being um, you know uh, impacting the parents on maybe their next um, investment opportunity or their next uh, ability to purchase maybe another family home or whatever that might be because of the actions mm. of the children so I, I totally agree with the transparency you've been talking about have that conversation with your child or your, or your children so that you know they're educated a little bit on how it impacts everybody and, and hopefully educates them for their decision making moving forward. Yeah, and I like the comment that's come through that we need to be careful of the digital footprint when it comes to applying for a loan or finance in the future. So that's absolutely yeah. true and that's sort of on point with what we're talking about. Um, we're also, oh, one of the things that I find quite funny is how surprised the teenagers are when we really analyse the cost of moving out of yeah, home. Absolutely. <laughs> Quickly, uh, we see the... Uh, see see lots of deflated looks around the room when they realise actually how expensive it is to uh, live out of home. Definitely. Um, and that's a you know a really interesting learning experience I think as a teenager. It is. Um, you know I suppose you, you're straight into paying rent. You're straight into paying for your utilities. So and that's the thing. Normally they know about the rent. Yeah. But it's all the extra stuff. It is. You know, it's all the ongoing bills. It's the food. Absolutely. You know. I, I, and, you know, I, could, I, w I think I was guilty of this as a young fella, um, looking at, looking on realestate.com and then saying, oh, I could, I could afford $250 a week mm. and wasn't thinking past that to the utilities and the water and, um, you know, the fact that there might be some things that needed to be fixed or maybe I needed furniture. I didn't have a, I didn't have a bed or a like couch. Like a fridge so, or a bed, yeah, yeah. bed would be so, useful. So the setup costs of, of moving out of home, um, you know, in, in some cases uh, can be very, very expensive in the thousands of dollars and that's just to get you set up. Um, you know, then you need to eat and, you know, you need to be able to cook. So then all of these things start to add up and yes, it, some of them are once off costs, but yeah. I it's think, still eye-opening um, to... What it, what it did for me was realise that I had a pretty good setup at home <laughs> um, and the minimal... That's probably why a lot of people are staying with their parents a lot longer these days. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and um, But I suppose over time as I picked up different things like a phone bill and, um, you know, I did help out every now and then around the home with, with a particular bill. I might have paid the electricity bill or the water bill when I was at home just to you know, I suppose get a taste of that. That's a great it's um, a great thing to do, you know, just to help you to understand it before before it actually became a reality for you. Absolutely. So Yeah. Um but we do go through that and, and quite quickly the thought of having a couple of mates living out of home, um, you know, living this very lavish lifestyle. Um it does get deflated <laughs> to a point, but I suppose it's a reality of It's a reality check, yeah. Yeah, it is. And and um I suppose the the message is Again, coming back to setting a goal. Mm. The goal is that I want to move out of home as quickly as possible. Um, that's going to cost X amount of money. Um, I'm actually going to start to save that money and get myself um, maybe two or three weeks ahead in my rent, maybe a month ahead in my rent in my savings. I'm also going to start to pick up a bit of furniture now um, so that I don't have lump sums worth yep. of transactions to make as soon as I, I move out of home. So, And I think that's the key theme that goes throughout all the workshops regardless of what age we're talking to is that they should be making the decision and having control over how they spend their money yeah. and really being mindful and proactive in terms of thinking about how they're going to make their money and then what portion of that money are they going to spend on needs what portion of that money are they going to spend on wants yep. and what portion is going to be left over for long-term yep. savings. Absolutely. And that's really the key. Yep. You know, the key is to uh, make sure that they're really conscious and spending that money wisely, yep. you know, and learning about the, the importance of saving for something bigger. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I probably taking the words out of your mouth there, but just dividing up your income into those categories mm. each week and, and being... Uh, I suppose discipline with that 
um, you can have a fun lifestyle, you can still meet your mm. um, financial obligations, and you can still be putting money away for your future without actually you know, missing out on anything. You know, that, that FOMO, that fear of missing out as a youngster. That's right. That's... Um, if you're disciplined enough to just pocket your money in three different accounts, um, as an example, um, you know, you're, 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 you're on your way to, to, you know, achieving your goals. Um, so, you know, I guess the other thing is that, especially for those students that are at working age, yep. you know, it's important for them to just know the basics of, you know, what superannuation is, yep. you know, what, why on their pay slips they don't get their full pay and there's a PAYG, yep. you know, tax, tax taken out of it and, and just really understanding all of those basics. And the other thing that we do go into um, in basic detail is starting to think about investing yep. and investing in their future. So, you know, I guess the three key lessons that we sort yep. of try and leave the children with, regardless of which age we're, we're yep. talking to, is that it doesn't matter how much money they earn, it's what they do with their money that counts. Yep. You know, that's a really important point. Um, we always say that it's never too early for them to start saving yep. and then investing their money. Yep. And, you know, from a parent's perspective, we can start encouraging our children to consider investing through board games at an early stage. Yep. You know, games like Monopoly and, um, I, you know, my children also like the game of life, which also teaches them about debt as well. So yep. there's, you know, different board games that you can play. Yep that can start to teach them about investing. And then as they get older, they can maybe invest in some shares and, and yep. maybe then explore further. And also the main message is for them to take control of their financial decisions. Absolutely. And that is something that we should be empowering our children to do from a really young age. You know, as soon as they're old enough to have their own money, yep. uh, they should be, you know, they should be encouraged to take control and initiative to make carefully thought out decisions as to what they do with that money and you know stretch it as far as they can stretch it so absolutely. yeah yeah I, I absolutely agree with that and i think um you know you've 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 hit the nail on the head there and it's just exciting that you know when we do round out those those key things that the students themselves feel empowered to to go ahead and, and take it on and um you know going back to the schools year on year you do see um that some of the, even the feedback to us is that they've gone and saved for certain things and they've hit their goals. And um, It's pretty rewarding when you go back to a school yeah. after seeing, and you see a student that you coached last year and yep. you know, how does that feel when they come up to you and they run yeah. up to you and say, Richard, I've saved for, yeah. my, I've saved for my cricket bat or whatever they were looking Absolutely. for. Absolutely, it, it's, um, it's very exciting and, and, and it, I suppose it just empowers um, Myself, or, or gives me good energy to keep doing that, mm. um, because it, you know, if it impacts one person, then that's fantastic. But I also believe that these children are going home and educating mum and dad as well, which Absolutely. is super important. Um, which, and in some cases, they they need that. So um, yeah. these are very basic um, life lessons, I suppose, that we're going in to teach, um, you know, these children and that's because potentially we weren't exposed to that um, in the curriculum, but um, what it's doing is it's generating stronger um, families and, and, and more empowered, I think you said before, about empowered to make decisions and empowered to you know, take control of, of the money that's coming into their pockets. Absolutely. Um, it, it is rewarding um, mm. to see every year. That's great. So um, that is that has brought us to the end of our Facebook Live session for today. But we hope that you've taken some tips that you can apply at home with your children to help them with their financial literacy. And you know, we definitely um, love doing the Rise High Rookie volunteer sessions. As I said, they are free. So um, speak to your t like your children's teachers or the school that they go to or any youth groups. Um, and let them know to register for our program. It is a free program, doesn't cost them anything, and they will get a wonderful interactive and fun uh, workshop with their students. So they, you can register for the Rise High Rookies program on our website uh, by contacting us and we will definitely be in touch to lock in a session. So if you have any questions or comments, please get in touch. Thanks again for joining us and if you're interested in buying your first home or first investment property, 
please do register for our first home buyer seminar coming up on the 2nd of April. Thank you so much and have a good evening. Bye. Yeah, thank you.